today we're going to talk about becoming zen about sex why is this important if you've been watching my other videos explaining why low sexual desire happens or why anxiety around sex happens then you know that we really need to take off the anxiety and the pressure that's going on in the sexual realm so sometimes that means that the partner has to kind of step back because inadvertently i mean this is not intentionally that the person is putting pressure on the other person to have sex with them because they are wanting it so badly and they're asking for it and they have full right to want it and to need it for sure but the problem is that that forward moving motion in the dynamic that's been created for so long just creates more of it and it's not very effective so what you want to do is move back with other things that we need to put into place as well not just to pulling back but this video is about helping you move back a little bit and become more centered around not being involved or worried or focused or driven by sex actually and that's a really hard thing to do because not only is it hard to do anyway and also kind of unfair like how can we ask you to shut down your needs and your feelings and to kind of be chill and zen about it yeah it sounds awful and it is awful but it is effective for the short term and that's one of the ways that you'll get through this is by thinking hey i'm going to do this for x amount of time three or six months or even one month if you can't handle anymore. But one month is not enough to see a change in the relationship and in the individual you're in the relationship with. So, you know, I'm saying, hey, for three or six months, we're going to do this. We, we're going to, you know, kind of defocus from sex, be really chill about it, not put any pressure, whether it's indirect or direct, so that the other person has room and space to figure out what they need and what they want. That's going to be better for me in the end because up until now, I haven't been getting what I need, which is desire coming from the other person. So if this is the way forward to figure out what to do with the discrepancy in desire, where one person has low desire and the other one has a high desire, where the person that has a high desire is the one usually that has to become said about sex, has to move back from the initiation, from the worrying, from the asking, from the anxiety around it, and to really take a step back and let that person kind of read and be able to figure out, okay, now I don't have to like be pressured or worried about this person because he's then over there about sex and he's also be then you're about to be connected but that's all good now i can look to myself and i can look at the relationship and the relational dynamic and how to change those things but from a place of like calmness and security keep in mind that the purpose of this experiment what i call experiment is not to punish you or to make you out to be a bad person or anything like that it's actually to get you what you want so my job is to understand what relational dynamics are occurring and how to either interrupt them or change them in a way that will be more conducive to what it is that you do want, which I'm guessing is a satisfying sexual relationship with your partner. Here's some tips. Number one, put a time frame on it, just like I spoke about. Number two, I'm going to allow your partner to come to you. And I know this is a, something that you've probably done before, but this does require you from move away and let that person come to you and put a time frame on it too. So does that mean that you go and you hide in a corner and you just don't come out of it because you're allowing them to come to you? No, on top of that, which is what's so hard, not only do you have to do that, but you also have to be connected in some way because if you're hiding in a corner, that's not sexy. That's not going to cause the other person's desire to open up to you. That is something that actually will shut it down. So not only do you have to become zen about sex, you also have to stay connected, stay in a place of like, I'm trying to get you to like me. I'm showing up in a fun way. I'm showing up in a calm way. I'm interested in you. I'm taking you out. We're having fun. There's a light, fun energy. That is the type of person that another wants to get closer to. So you want to become zen about sex, but also become this person that's really connected and seductive in a way. So what does that look like? Do you like maybe you're used to flirting by touching your boob or touching your butt? Um, this does not look like that. This looks more like first date material. So you want to get that in your mind. I'm going to like in continuous first date and that will answer most of your questions of what should I do? So on a first date, you're not going to grab a boob. Of course, there's people that do that. But in general, the first date is like, let me get to know you. Let me show you my best version of myself and let's have some fun. So you want to really be focused on that piece. And also when you go on a first date, it's not that you're not going to have sex or you don't want to have sex, but rather that you're following somebody's lead in a way, like you might grab their breasts, but it will be after a series of check-ins, you know, like, okay, so we meet up and if you're smiling and I'm smiling, things are good. You go to the next step and maybe I, I lightly touch you and, and laugh and look at you 
And if you respond lightly, then, oh, we're doing good. We're, we're on our way. And then little by little following where the person is at is that's how the journey is, you know, it's one step at a time. It's like one thing after the other. So that's the type of mentality you want to have with this as well. So it's not that you're not going to do anything, but if you happen to like be flirtatious and, and hug or kiss your partner and they kiss you back, then maybe that's your indication that you can just like slightly, slightly go forward a little bit. But what happens most often is that we go too fast. And so it needs to slow down. And I know for a lot of people, this is hard because they're already feeling rejected. They're already feeling like maybe I'm not doing this right. And then now I'm telling you on top of that, like, oh, you got to slow it down. We got to do this. You got to do that. And it is not for the faint of heart. This is really, really hard to do. And I know that a lot of it is unfair, except that that seems to be the only thing that works. So I don't know what to do about that. The other thing they want to do is celebrate the no's. If your partner's saying no to you, that's a good thing. You're getting closer to your goal the more she says no to you. Because up until now, she hasn't said no to you. She's wanted to say no and she said yes or he. So you want to make sure that dynamic changes. That does not work. Because saying yes when you want to say no builds resent, feeling of pressure. And that doesn't result in good things. So you want to switch that and say, I want you to say no to me. I want to celebrate your no's because I know that that's actually going to get me to stronger yeses and for you to want to be here and are excited to be here with me physically. Unfortunately, you're probably going to have to look at your value system. So whether you're a female or a male, you have grown up in a society that has skewed so many messages about what makes a valuable female and a valuable male. We get really anxious around sex and we have a lot of sexual desire and that leads us to push forward, to want to be really distressed when we're not getting it. You might want to ask yourself like, is there something more here than just me wanting to have fun and feel pleasure? Or does my value or my identity depend on this piece? So hence, if I'm not having sex or my wife, in my understanding, doesn't want to have sex with me, that means that I'm not sexually desired, which means the worst possible thing that could happen because the most valuable thing that you can have is sexual desire. I mean, that trumps almost anything. So it's a marker for value in the society, heavy duty marker. So when you're facing these things in your relationship where it says to you, you're not a valuable human being and that's going to crush you. Nobody wants to think that of themselves or face that fact. So you want to think about like, do I want my value system to be determined by whether I'm sexually desirable? Or? Because right now, this is what's happening with the value system. This is what it looks like. So is it working for me? I kind of think it does it. So maybe think about like, okay, what other value systems can I adhere to? Or maybe I don't have any value system. I just simply and valuable because I am alive and I'm a human being that is worthy of that. Or I can choose a value system that works better for me, especially in this situation, in the sexual situation. But that work is complicated and convoluted. So you might want to look at things that talk about the ego and shape. This next step would cause a lot of couples therapists out there to not be happy. I understand that and I am not suggesting that you do this with every aspect of your relationship, but just the sexual one. And because there is pressure in the sexual realm, we need to remove the pressure. Sometimes that pressure comes from our partners talking to us all the time about how they're feeling about the lack of sex or about what we should do or read this book or I'll send you this text and let's talk about it. And I, you know, in so many different ways. And that becomes not only pressure inducing, but exhausting. I'm not saying don't talk. That's a good thing that's like a thing that will help you heal it's a good thing but maybe not talk in this particular instance to your partner about it find somebody else that you can just be stressed with finally the last thing which is probably good for all of us no matter what so why not attempt to change this dynamic that we all have which is to be in our heads all the freaking time and the more anxious you are the more in your head you are and some of us spin and spin and spin again since so spend hours in our heads like spinning the same topic over and over and over again with you know different angles to it but kind of in that anxious very obsessive compulsive way and what that does is it removes us from our body and from our feelings and also from our connections to others because we're in our head we're like somewhere else we're not here in the now and our body in the present so it has that dynamic to it but also the obsessive compulsive thoughts are usually negative and really toxic so the more and more you do that, the more and more you believe this that you're saying to yourself. So 
it's like a negative snowball so that the more you do it, the worse things get. And this exercise that you're going to be doing or experiment requires a lot of emotional regulation because you have to become dead about sex and you have to talk about your feelings in a different way, which is in a different video. But you have to do things that are much less react because the reactivity to things could be causing some of the issues. And the best way for us to be less reactive to our feelings is to be more in our feelings and less in our I'll leave you with an exercise that is good practice in order to stay with your feelings and out of your head. So it's a kind of like a mixture of mindfulness, meditation, right? It's neither one completely, but a kind of a blend of both. I call this staying with our feelings. So most of the time we have a feeling like anxiety. Oh my God, we haven't had sex for a while. We're not going to have sex again. We're not, you know, I know that that goes on to like doomsday. So noticing I am getting anxious. I'm getting anxious about sex. Labeling, becoming aware of your feelings is super important. Step number one. So to say, I am feeling anxious, right? And then to give yourself permission to feel anxious because for our whole entire lives, that permission was not granted. The opposite was granted, which was do not show your feelings. So being able to say, I'm feeling anxious. It's okay to feel anxious. I am just going to sit here and feel anxious. And so wherever you feel it in your body, and if you don't feel it anywhere, choose a place in your body. Most people feel their feelings here in the chest. So focus on your chest and say, I'm feeling anxious. It's okay to feel anxious. I'm going to just say you and feel anxious. That's and you'll start to just stay there in your chest. That's the whole point. So be in your chest. But right away, a thought will come in. Want to let go of the thought and go back into your chest, into the anxiety. And then another thought will come in. You let it go and go back. You just keep up doing that over and over again because the thoughts are quite fast. And you'll have to do this a lot at the beginning because your mind, your system is so used to, I feel distressed, I go to fall. And right now you're going to have to almost like retrain it to, I feel distressed and I stay in distress and I don't go into my mind. So anytime you have a thought, let it go and go back into your chest. And that's going to help you become a about sex.